X-Men. We are back with more X-Men Legends. This time, X-Men Legends 2. After we just finished the first game, which was great, by the way. And if you have not watched it, you should uh, go watch my playthrough of that, because it, it's great. Military Prison Outpost. The Master of Magnet strikes again. Go. Amuse yourselves. <laughs> Sabretooth looks a lot like Wolverine in this game. His face and like his hair. Very similar. God, they changed Cyclops' voice actor from the first game. It's not Robin Atkins Downs anymore. It's uh that other guy that voiced Piers in Resident Evil 6. She's been abducted. Indeed, Charles. It appears we both have a grievance with Apocalypse. Oh, they changed Magneto's voice actor too. They kept they kept Sir Patrick Stewart though. That was a good call. Nightcrawler, we've located the professor. It's okay to teleport in. Will do. Get him to the X-Jet, Nightcrawler. We'll meet you there. As you wish. All right, let's go. The graphics in this one are a lot cleaner, which is, I mean, it only came out a year after the first game, but it does look nicer. I forgot how much better it looks. So, full disclosure, I did play this first area during X-Men week, so I I know the tutorial and like maybe the first half an hour of the game already, but everything after that is going to be completely new to me. Sabretooth and Mystique, it looks like we're cut off. You two will have to find another way out. Let's rendezvous back at the X-Jet. I knew things were going too smoothly. Also, if you uh, didn't watch X-Men Week, you should totally watch it, because it was, it was fun. Playing all those old X-Men games was a blast. Okay, so Magneto has Master of Magnet there. We can throw stuff. Well, Cyclops yes. probably has eye beams, right? Yep. Storm, which I like. I like Storm's design in this. It's nice. It's better than the first game. She's got lightning bolt. We picked up some gear. 
Outfit each character with beneficial equipment that will help enhance their abilities. Would you like equipment to be distributed automatically? No. No, I, I will do it. Absolutely, I will do it. And then Wolverine, he's still got his slash. And he does a little grunt. Nice. Okay, menu looks roughly the same as it did in the first game. Uh, stats, okay, we got stats, we got skills. There are a lot of skills. Death trap, wow. In the first game, each character only had like three and an ultimate. It looks like you can pick from quite a few different ones in this game, which is cool. I like that. So I picked up some gear. It is defined as gear. They didn't, they didn't put a lot of effort in the naming, I guess. Eight defense. Uh, sure, we'll give it to Magneto. Why not? Force field. A door. A ladder. Hey, do you Can you open that for me? No? What about you? Can you? Okay. It is so much fun to just pick up guys and throw them around. Okay, so we can punch, we can heavy punch with circle. And light fast attacks are X. We can also throw guys with the square button if they survive long enough to be thrown. Ooh, these guys are purple. So, so let's go ahead and... Oh, these... I guess we can't throw these guys. They're too high level or something. Pick up bands. Which bands are just for attack. They, they really, uh... I mean, not that the first game had the best naming of the gear, but they put in a little more effort than just, like, bands and gear. Which way... We came from that way. The force field is right here, right? There's some health, and uh, we can use Magneto to somehow manipulate that computer. Look at that. Uh, we got a laser. Magneto can't do nothing about yes. that. Cyclops can, though. If you insist. Uh, Storm probably can too, right? Nice. What have we here? Okay, we got some guys blocking our path. I don't think that's gonna be too much of an issue. And they all go down pretty quick. Oh, that guy's. That guy's like 10 feet tall. Magneto has leveled up. Uh, your character has just leveled up. Stat and skill improvements can be automatically distributed or you may take control of this yourself. Um, I would like to do that myself, please. Give me back up. Okay, so much like the first game, you have body, focus, and strike, and then it looks like for this game they added speed. Uh, body increases your health points and chance for double health from potions. Very nice. Focus increases your energy points, energy regeneration, melee, mental damage, and chance for double energy from potions. Strike increases the damage you do, 2% per striking. And now speed, which is the new one, increases your attack rating and defense rating. Attack rating increases the chance to hit with melee attacks. And defense increases your ability to dodge. Interesting. I guess speed isn't new, right? I guess there was agility in the first game. So this is pretty much the same thing, except now agility also raises attack your attack rating instead of just defense because before strike used to raise your attack rating interesting okay okay so for magneto we unlocked polarized shield which gives us a buff that lets us uh, have a chance to ignore damage 
or block damage, I guess. Now, it looks like we can go through this wall, which we we totally can. Nice. What have we here? Wolverine and Storm leveling up. And the uh, the animations and stuff are a lot smoother in this game too compared to the first game. I am definitely Pretty strong. wild how big of an improvement a lot of this seems like it is, considering it only came out a year after the first one. All right, let's blow this popsicle stand to the X jet. Greetings. This location is known as the Sanctuary, a retreat of Magnetos. It will serve as our base of operations while we're here on the island of Genosha. Several days ago, Apocalypse attacked the city of Genosha. Magneto and several of his people were able to escape, but the rest of the populace was trapped. After helping to rescue me, Magneto requested the X-Men's aid in freeing Genosha. I could hardly refuse. Man, this game doesn't mess around. It just dumps you in, and it's like, hey, we freed Professor X, and Magneto asked for his help, and this is what's going on. Like, let's do it. It's nice not playing a five-hour tutorial before a game starts. It's great. Is this really a good idea, having the X-Men and the Brotherhood team up? Apocalypse is far too strong for either team to battle alone. I realize this is a stressful situation, but remember, thousands of lives are depending on us. We must learn to work together. How do we find out about missions and get briefings? Talking to people around camp will activate your objectives. To receive briefings, activate the mission computer here to my side. Right now, you should speak with Sabretooth. He requires aid in finding a mutant he had helped escape from Genosha. Good luck to you. Uh, press start and choose the objectives tab to look at the status of your objectives. Hint, you will find Sabretooth by following the yellow exclamation point or arrow on your auto map. Okay, we gotta talk to Sabretooth. Uh, what? It, oh, we got trivia game again. That was always fun. Can we talk to Professor X? Greetings. I hope you'll find teaming up with the X-Men to be a rewarding experience. Now this is one thing that I think is a huge improvement over the first game is that there's character-specific responses in the dialogue instead of everyone just saying the same thing. Like Magneto says, Spare me your eternally positive attitude, Xavier. We're working with the X-Men only because we have to. And if it was like Storm or something, the response would be a little more, you know, nice. How did Apocalypse take you prisoner? I had received a communique from Dr. Moira McTaggart requesting Polaris and I meet her in Madrid. Only too late did I come to find out it was a trap. Any idea why Apocalypse wanted you? His primary target was Polaris. I was merely an afterthought. Why would Apocalypse kidnap Polaris? I don't know, but he was adamant that she not be harmed. I'm almost certain she's in no immediate danger. Oh, well, okay. That, everything's fine, then. Why were you being tortured? Apocalypse was determined to obtain information on Cerebro and the Xavier Protocols, two areas I am particularly secretive about. Aren't the Xavier Protocols a list of all the mutants in the world? Yes, and with it, Apocalypse would know every mutant's strengths and weaknesses. And their location. Indeed. And that is perhaps the most sensitive information of all. And doesn't it seem kind of reckless to you know, keep all that information and invasive, like really, really invasive. Now I know I'm Magneto, master of magnet, but could you remind me who is Apocalypse? He was born over 5,000 years ago in Egypt and is considered by many to be the first mutant ever born. He's 5,000 years old? 
That's incredible. Apocalypse could very well be immortal. He's a metamorph, capable of turning his body into a variety of weapons. But what's most dangerous is his ideology. Survival of the fittest. Survival of the fittest? I know nothing of that. As Magneto, Master of Magnet, I do not believe in a similar ideology. Apocalypse believes the strong should destroy the weak. This, he feels, would create a powerful civilization worthy of him to rule over. That doesn't sound familiar to me at all. Uh, why are the Brotherhood and X-Men working together? Magneto asked for the X-Men's assistance. He feels Apocalypse is too powerful for the Brotherhood to defeat alone. Xavier, why are you speaking as if I am not right in front of you? Isn't there someone else that I, Magneto, Master of Magnet, could go to for help? Perhaps, but none he could depend on in the heat of battle. You see, even though we differ in ideology, Magneto knows he can trust my word. And I know that I can trust his. That is a fair point. Also, why are we both referring to me in the third person? Like I'm not here. Alright, what else we got going on here? It doesn't look like too much. Can we go in the X-Jet? We cannot. Uh, this place is kind of a dump. It looks like it may also be on fire, which is, which is great. We can talk to Beast, however. Greetings. My name is Dr. Hank McCoy, but you can refer to me by the moniker Beast. I already know who you are, Furball. I'd like to see some equipment. What are we looking at? Okay, he sells health pack and energy packs, so no more healer. And it looks like, yeah, he sells all the stuff that Forge used to sell, as well as, like, the grab bag. Questions? which was something that healers sold. So they, they just combined all the shops into one, which is, that's that's nice. And then there's training, apparently. We can buy skill points, it looks like. So that, and level advances, okay. So that's kind of cool. Are you the person we see for equipment? Indeed I am. Through me, you will be able to buy and sell all manner of devices that will aid you in your missions. What about health and energy? I can acquire potions that will replenish both of those statistics. What's a homing beacon? Homing beacons are extremely valuable. I can use them to locate an important individual that Apocalypse is holding prisoner. But I require several of them to pinpoint the location. Who's this important prisoner? I don't know. But from what I've heard, this person would be of immense aid to us. Oh, okay, so we can, like, unlock a character, maybe? Um. Oh, I skipped over this one. You're the smartest X-Man, aren't you? I do have a certain penchant for learning. But I don't know if I could really lay claim to that title. But that's why you're in charge of equipment, isn't it? And not Forge? That guy that specifically makes equipment? <laughs> Charles gave me these responsibilities because I have a knack for dealing with technical issues. But there are several other X-Men who could do that job as well, if not better than I. Forge is the first one who comes to mind. So what's he up to? Why is he busy? Uh, see you around, Furball. Yes, I shall be counting the seconds. Hero Stash. Looks like a place we can store equipment. Not sure how necessary that's going to be. Can we stand in the fire? We cannot stand in the fire. My immersion's destroyed. Extraction point. That's where we can save and change our party. Okay, doesn't look like there's anything else to do here other than to go talk to Sabretooth. We should have Wolverine do that, right? Just, just, for, just for RP sakes, right? No. Never thought I'd see the day. The Brotherhood be working alongside you, ex -pukes. Oh, that's that's clever. We're enjoying this as much as you, Sabretooth. Listen, much as I hate it, I need your help. A couple of hours ago, I went to Genosha to rescue a kid named Blink. 
But one thing led to another, and we wound up fighting a bunch of guards. You've never been known for working quietly. Shut your yap or I'll... Oh. Never mind. Anyway, during the fight, Blink was going to teleport us to the dead zone. But she got hit and disappeared without me. I wound up having to slug my way out of there alone. And now you need us to find Blink somewhere in the dead zone. Yeah, yeah, I do. Go see that mission computer if you want a full briefing. Why did you try to rescue Blink? What are you talking about? Let's face facts. Rescuing people really isn't your style. Mm, maybe it ain't. But I wasn't about to leave the kid unprotected. There's no telling what Apocalypse would do to her. How did Blink wind up in the dead zone? When I was trying to get her out of Genosha, a bunch of Apocalypse's guards jumped us. And that's when Blink tried to teleport you to the dead zone? Yeah, but she got clobbered by a guard. Next thing I know, she's gone, and I'm left there on my own. And let me tell you, the guard that hit Blink ain't ever gonna draw another breath without the help of a machine, if you catch my drift. When did you first meet Blink? Hmm. I found her a couple of years back at some mutant testing facility. I was doing some recon work for Magneto. Poor kid was in a cell, all helpless and alone. So I busted her out of the joint. But weren't there other mutants at that testing facility? Why didn't you free them? <clears throat> she was a defenseless kid, didn't have no one to help her. Now shut up about it! You're giving me a headache. What's the dead zone? It's where the air fleets of Magneto and Apocalypse had their last big battle. The ground's covered with crashed ships. Why is that? Even though Magneto's aircraft weren't that high tech, his pilots put up a hell of a fight. So Apocalypse fired off an EMP bomb that fried ships on both sides. You're becoming a real softy, Sabretooth. Don't make me hurt you. Okay, so we got our mission. Now I guess we gotta go check the computer so he can tell us what our mission is. Or, or Oh, are we just going? I think we're just going. 